Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. Sega! Sonic Mania is a nostalgic thrill ride of 16-bit splendor. It's literally one huge, gigantic reference to previous Sonic titles and 1990s culture. Here's 40 secrets, easter eggs and references that we noticed and think you should too. By the way, there's a few boss encounter spoilers here so come back later if you don't want to know them just yet. Okie dokie, let's do this. Starting on the title screen, if you can look past the logo then in the distance you'll see the island Sonic Mania begins on and the eagle eyed of you will notice it's the shape of Sonic's face. Around the edge of the logo itself, it's designed to look like the Genesis or Mega Drive directional pad decals. Pretty nice touch. At the beginning of Chemical Plant Zone, a seemingly random chemical lands on Sonic's head. It seems out of place, but after a little digging, the origins of Sonic's shake dry animation can be found. It's a not so subtle nod to Sonic Spinball, a pinball title from 1993, as Sonic jumps out of the water at the beginning of the Toxic Caves. During Act 2 of The Chemical Plant, Sonic bumps into his old nemesis Dr. Robotnik and faces off in a strange little mini-game. This is a callback to Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine from 1993, based on another Sega game named By the way, once you've unlocked this, you can play it anytime you want, against the AI or against a friend. The Sonic Debug Mode returns in Mania 2, allowing you to move about the level like a developer and drop random items and lives to great effect. To use it, simply start a new game and highlight the No Save option. The triangle button now gives you lovely secret options such as the debug mode. This works in the same way on Xbox, but Switch users you'll be entering a code for access to this one. As a continuation of all these secret options, here you can also activate Sonic's abilities from previous Sonic titles, but only if you've unlocked them during the bonus stages. This can also change elements of Sonic Mania to resemble or mimic those in numerous other Sonic titles. Oh, by the way, the special stages in Sonic Mania are developed from the UFO hunting stages in Sonic CD or the general gameplay mechanics in Sonic R. If you've never played Sonic R, it's a racing game like Mario Kart, but without as many carts. This is also the home of and knuckles mode which was and still is a meme which causes people to add and knuckles to the end of random things. It actually originates from a technology known as lock-on. It also comes with lock-on technology. Allowing one Sonic cartridge to be physically connected to another. If it was done during Sonic 3, the player would unlock Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles. Do you see where I'm going? It allowed Knuckles the Echidna to play out his own stages and contribute to the entire storyline. So the meme is a continuation of adding Knuckles to an existing property. Strange, but true. Speaking of the lock-on technology, there are neon lights in Studioopolis that reveal this groundbreaking technology and again using the flip cards in the same level. Little nods to other Sega franchises can be spotted around the game too. In Studioopolis, the pink bot sign may look familiar as it has a striking resemblance to the Pine Pot Cafe in Streets of Rage 1 and 2. Travel a little further and Sonic will be beamed from an outdoor broadcast truck which has familiar markings. The High Class Hornet is a callback to one of the main vehicles in Daytona, USA. Or should I say, Daytona! <laughs> the transferring sound effect is also from Sonic Spinball. Coincidentally, Sonic made an Easter egg appearance in Daytona as a rock sculpture in a mountain, no less. Back in Sonic Mania and those screens that Sonic passes are based on the Sega Game Gear, with the three colour logo recreated to perfection. On the opening plane journey, Tails can be seen wearing flight goggles. 
I expected them to be the same from Sky Chase in Sonic 2, but they were nowhere to be seen. In fact, I'm told they are from Sonic's cartoon movie, released back in 1999. I guess so. Alternately, if you decide to play Sonic Mania as Tails, Sonic will wear his scuba goggles whilst piloting the plane. Pretty cool, yeah, but the goggles were designed to be in the original Sonic title, but were never used. They most probably would be used to prevent Sonic from drowning underwater. Speaking of removed content from the original Sonic title, during the press garden zone, these jumping rabbit things known as splats are scattered around the zone for you to destroy. Well, the splats were intended to be in the 90s Sonic games, but were taken out before the final release. The same can be said for Sonic's pose at the end of the stage, which was present in the early build of Sonic 1 with a few extra elements from very early concept art drawings. This is the same situation for the lamps in Studioopolis, which were repurposed alien UFOs that didn't make the cut all those years ago. Staying in Studioopolis and the level itself is a reference to the LA studio of the same name, which is used to do the VO for English versions of Sonic the Hedgehog, dating back to 2010 no less. Did you notice the horrible feedback drone during the end of your time in Studioopolis? This is a reference to the car crash livestream Sega made to celebrate Sonic's 25th anniversary. There's so much information we want to... The entire broadcast was ruined by the aforementioned drone and made the event a bit of a laughing stock. Even the date on the screen is the same as the livestream. It's good to see Sega seeing the funny side of that disastrous livestream, unless they haven't found that easter egg yet. Awkward. <laughs> That's the sound of 25 years of Sonic! Well, I hope it's not the sound of 25 years of Sonic. It's more like tinnitus. <laughs> Sticking in Studioopolis and the popcorn machine Sonic finds himself in. This is a real thing in Japan, known as the Sega Sonic Popcorn Shop. After selecting the popcorn of choice, a minigame is displayed, allowing the user to play whilst waiting for the popcorn to be made. Dr. Robotnik would attempt to prevent Tails from making the popcorn, but don't worry too much, it was not possible to fail, so you're guaranteed to get your popcorn in many flavours, including curry flavour. A nod to Club Sega can be seen in the background at Studioopolis. Club Spin sounds like a really good place for Sonic to visit, but Club Sega is the real counterpart. The club spin billboard also says ages underneath, which is Sega backwards. And yet another nod to old school Sega and the advertisement run, to be this good takes ages. To be this good takes Sega. To be this good takes Sega. Another Sega advertising campaign is also referenced in Mania and came at the time when Sega and Nintendo ruled the video game world. Turning over these cards like an 80s game show will reveal Genesis does. This is a reference to the days when Sega threw shade at Nintendo. Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Super Monaco GP free or Collins free. What Nintendo don't. With Sonic Mania available on the Nintendo Switch, this is probably as far as the joke can be pushed without causing offence. Turn another set of cards over and you will find Welcome to the Next Level and Pirate TV. Yet more 90s Sega adverts, which were a little off the wall to say the least. Unpleasant odors. You have just been invaded by Sega TV! Stardust Speedway is a callback to Sonic CD. Not only that, but during the boss fight with Metal Sonic, he calls upon the services of another Sonic like being. Well, that's Silver Sonic from Sonic 2 on the Master System, not the Mega Drive or the Genesis. He was the end boss if you didn't collect all the Chaos Emeralds. Back in 1991, in the Springyard Zone, random words could be seen in the background, like cope up on CPU. If these were random words or related to the game's editor, I'm not too sure, but they are back in Sonic Mania, graffitied onto the side of trains or subway vehicles in the background. In the Metallic Madness Zone, Sonic can be struck by a mysterious shrinking ray. The sprite he becomes looks like the mini Sonic from Sonic CD and arguably a callback to the rearview mirror decoration from Radmobile, yet another Sega video game. If it's neither of those, then it'll be a reference to the continue screen in many Sonic titles. During the boss fight at the end of Mirage Saloon, many of Sonic's old friends and enemies turn up for a few seconds. Knack the Weasel shows up from 1994's Sonic Triple Trouble as he appears. The sound effect from the Game Gear is used. Lovely touch. It's the sound of Sonic losing his rings in all its 8-bit glory. Back the Polar Bear, who is best known for being punched in the face by Sonic, 
is here too. He's from Sonic the Fighters, which was an attempt to turn Sonic into a fighting game like Virtual Fighter. It didn't do too well, but still a quality reference. Bean the Dynamite is here too, and although he was in Sonic Fighters, he is actually a character from the 1988 arcades and a game called Dynamite Ducks with an X, in which players would beat the shit out of different animals in an attempt to rescue their girlfriend Lucy. Speaking of girlfriends, Sonic Senpai Screaming Lady Friend is in Sonic Mania, but not as a playable character. She is reimagined as a remote controlled bot thing during a fight with Robotnik on Metallic Madness, which could be a nod to her size and stature in Sonic R, or even the Amy dolls, which were scary as heck. In Studioopolis, there's a reference to the Sonic Colors announcer, where the neon sign at the bottom will say, Good, great, awesome, outstanding, amazing, complimenting the player's skill. Over in the Pressed Garden Zone is a boss named the Heavy Ninja. If you've played another Ninja-themed Sega property from the 90s, the noises and sound effects may ring a bell to you. That's because many of them are taken directly from Shinobi. What a quality game that was. Does the Jumping Caterpillar boss during Act 1 of Mirage Saloon look familiar? Well, it's a beefed up version of the Caterpillar, first seen in the original Sonic 1 Marble Zone and the dangerous Bell Tower boss from Sonic Chaos. Is this interspecies relations or steroid abuse? <laughs> I can't keep lying. Ah, oh, f*** it. I'll let you decide. So there we go, 40 Sonic Mania easter eggs and references in super quick time. I've tried to stay away from the references that are only for hardcore fans in favour of those which we can all appreciate. There are so many more callbacks and references to discover and if you've found any please let us know. I will make a follow up video and give you a shout out for everything you uncover first. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade, this has been an absolute pleasure, I'll see you next time. Daytona! <laughs>